Hi, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life. I get questions all the time. What type of camera equipment do you use to make your vlogs? I think this has become an obsession. Well, hi, it's Jerry. We get questions all the time. What do you use to create your videos for I Love RV Life? <laughs> well, you can see here a lot. Well, it was it didn't originally start out that way. Um, let me kind of give you uh, just a little bit of background where I came from and where we're at now. Uh, I started in this industry of video making television commercials and infomercials for a local market and uh, did that as a sub, as a freelancer for a number of retail outlets here in middle Georgia. And um, that kind of set the stage for what I would be doing in the future. Now, to clarify that, I was always behind the camera, never ever in front of the camera. It's, it's quite a bit different. Wrote a lot of copy, did all those types of things for lots of clients. But uh, the industry kind of changed for us and the business that we have making web designs. And uh, we got out of the television market and all of our video for our commercial clients ended up on the web, training aids and those types of things, uh, YouTube marketing, etc., etc. We launched the channel in 2017, really with no intention of it being much, but thanks to all the subscribers and all of our viewers that are out there, you enjoy our content and we are internally grateful. But uh, as a result of what we had done in the past, and if you are considering getting into YouTube video, let me give you some suggestions. Before you ever buy your first camera, you need to think about what is your channel going to be like? Uh, how are you going to communicate? Is it going to be self-help? Is it going to be travel? What is the style that you want to be able to use? Once you kind of get a feel what uh, that style should be like, uh, then that will start guiding you in your camera choice as, as you go forward. Uh, what I'd like to do today is talk a little bit about process and then we'll talk about cameras. Um, our process uh, is not unusual to a lot of the YouTubers that are out there. We kind of call ours run and gun. That's a, really an industry term uh, from a long time ago in making television commercials or the news industry. And run and gun means uh, we do this 100% without script. I know, it probably shows. But we do it without script. Uh, we kind of get an idea of what we're going to do for the day. You know, we're going to take a hike. We're going to go to a museum. We're going to show a campground. Uh, we're going to do tips on, you know, upgrading our RV or our truck that we use to pull it. Those types of things. We're going to get kind of a, we're going to work in this specific area today. And that kind of sets the stage for what we're going to be doing. Then our style for our vlog is to make it very, very conversational. We want to bring you along for the tour and let you see through our eyes using a camera. That's our style. And it's run and gun. And uh, that has defined a lot of the cameras that we have used. Number one, we want to be very low profile. The first thing that we're not gonna do is carry one of these things around, you know, and try to shoot. That day has passed. We still do commercial photography. We still use these. These are very, very expensive cameras. Um, this is a PW2150, I think. It's about a $3,000 camera, somewhere thereabout. I've got a couple of them. and. Um, you know, those have a specific purpose. Uh, when I go to a client, the client likes to see a nice big camera and uh, they know that that camera with the right videographer behind it is gonna provide a good quality video. And it has a lot of pros and cons. I won't go into all the features and benefits. This is not a vlogging camera. I would never recommend it. But it's a great commercial, prosumer style camera. I really wanna take you through the path of where do you start? Some of you may be saying, I never want to create a YouTube vlog. Okay, well, I understand that. But how we got into it was our adult kids. They were saying, you know, mom, dad, you're out there traveling around. You are a videographer by trade. We don't have a clue where you're at or what you're seeing. Can you give us a little peek into your trips? And we said, absolutely, we'll start doing that. Hence, I Love RV Life started and continues to grow. And again, thanks to you for that. So kind of let me take you on that path of where maybe you want to start. And then based on 
all this of what we've purchased, I'll kind of give you the pros and cons about what might work best for you. When we first started, I had no idea you know, exactly what I wanted the style of our channel to be like. And the last thing I wanted to do is start spending this money for this equipment. And I use my phone. Uh, the phones that we have today, the nice quality iPhones that you can buy, whether it's a, a 9 or a 10, um, or even some of the Samsungs that are out there, the 8s, the 9s, uh, and, and forward, uh, in, in an Android format, this is a Samsung, make beautiful, beautiful video. It has its pros, it has its cons, definitely has its cons. But if I was just going to be using this strictly for very slow pans, not walking around, um, as some of our early videos showed, <laughs> and you can tell, um, this does a great job. First of all, you've got this camera. It's going to make pretty, pretty video. Uh, from this camera and it's not going to cost you another penny to operate at least from a video capture standpoint we'll talk about editing later but from a video capturing standpoint use your phone if you're not sure where you want to go or if you're just doing this for the kids and the family back home then um, they will accept a little bit of jiggle that's the downside with these they have little stabilization in it so as you're walking you know, I call it the drunk effect. You just and you see people move too quick or move the camera around way way too fast. I don't care what you use in here. You know, make your pans very very slow. I know. I, I even myself sometimes too, get too excited about what I'm shooting. It's easy to kind of get away from yourself and not do those slow pans. But these do a reasonably good job. They're a great place to start. And look, you can look at the vi YouTube videos out there. There are a ton of people that use nothing but the camera, make good quality video, make a great entertainment channel, and um, it's a good place to start. And if you're on a budget, it's not going to cost you another extra dime to be able to get involved. If I was budget conscience and I could only purchase one camera that would be kind of universal, and again, I talk about this run and gun process that we use. I like to keep a low profile. Here's what happens. Um, you're walking you know, through a very busy, busy area with a ton of people and you pull out you know, a big camera <laughs> or you know, even something smaller, half this size, and you start showing that thing around, people, one of two things either happen. They either start gravitating toward you and start you know, throwing their hands up in the camera and running your shots. Or secondly, you'll see people flee you know, like you've got the plague. You know, the last thing they wanna be is on the camera and it just really causes a distraction. I like to show the natural environment of what's going on. It doesn't matter whether it's big trees with Spanish moss growing on it or if it's just nothing more than you know a crowd of people walking down a busy street, I I want to be able to show that to, for everybody to kind of get a feel where Joan and I are going. Again, it's that first person shot of what we're being able to see. This is a Sony CX455. This is not the cheapest camcorder that you can buy. Um, they come in, a, you you can buy these things in the you know. $150 to $175 range. They have certain features on there that you may or may not need. I like this one. This one, it was a little bit on the pricey side. I think it's about $400 is what we paid for it. Um, you can get multiple size batteries. You can see this large battery that I have here that snaps on the back. And um, I can film all day long with this. Not only can I film at you know high resolution 1080i you can get these you can even you know buy the seven to eight to nine hundred dollar camera in this kind of a format you know and get into the 4k but uh, for a nice high definition uh, 1080 uh, presentation plus this thing's got a uh, you know a nine megapixel still camera capability this is a wonderful camera it's simple to use you know you pop it up like this there we go. Um, you can put everything on auto, you know, if you're just a casual shooter. And uh, you can walk around with this in a number of different formats. You know, you can hold it to your chest. You can flip the screen like this. If you want to get into a selfie mode, the camera turns around and you can hold it like this. It has 
facial recognition that you can set for it so that your face, I have it set for that now, the face is always in focus, you know, as you're talking to it. Um, it has a 30x zoom. Why is that important? Well, you know, if you've got that big lake shot and you want to show the boats at the end, it's, it's, it, is not, it is an optical, it's electronic, but it still does a really good job. You can get out to about 30 times uh, in a zoom and really have a great picture. It does have some stabilization. You can't run with it, but if you walk carefully with it, um, it does a really, really good job. You're gonna get just a little bit of movement, but you're not gonna get all that shaking. You still have to be conscious when you walk and you will get a little bit of floating, but what a wonderful camera, 400 bucks, slips, you know, if you got some baggy pants on, it slips in your pocket, you can pull it out when you need it, do your shot, you just push a button, you can hold it down here to your, to your uh, stomach area and be able to shoot, but it's a, it's a wonderful camera for 400 bucks. And I, I said, if I was a budget YouTuber, um, and look, I just saw some videos at RTR, and I saw a lot of people walking around with this style of camera. You just can't beat it. It's a great, it's a great camera. The next camera that I probably use um, probably half the time, I've got two cameras that I use about 50-50, and it depends on the type of thing that I'm going to be doing. This is a Canon T6i DSLR. I absolutely love this camera. Um, it just has so many features. It makes beautiful, beautiful pictures. If you've gone to I Love RV Life and looked at the gallery, you see lots and lots of gallery shoots. So when I walk around with this, especially if I'm in a place like a museum, I've got this little safety strap. I think this thing was like $10. Uh, so if you ever drop it, uh, which I've almost done several times, you're not gonna wreck your lens. But uh, this camera is just absolutely wonderful. What I like about it is that when you shoot in a video mode, you can do your selfies, you know, like that. Oh, let me turn it around so you can see it. I can do my selfies like that, uh, you know, and hold them up. Uh, and the camera is relatively, relatively steady, uh, not, to the, not to the capability of some other cameras I'm going to show you. If you walk very aggressively with this, it's going to bounce around like you're on a trampoline. That's the downside to using most of your DSLRs that are out there. The upside is just the beautiful photography and videography. This makes beautiful video. Um, you can get this camera, looking at my notes, somewhere in the $700 range. And what it comes with is a uh, 18 by 55 lens. I'm not showing that one here. An 18 by 55 lens, which is a reasonable lens to start with for your um, for your video needs. And then what you really really want is you want a um, a zoom lens as well, especially if you're going to be using this photography. And for that 700 bucks, you can get the camera body, the uh, the the up to 55 lens, and then you can get this 75 by 300 lens. And this thing is really wonderful. Um, it, it does a really great zoom. The color is absolutely great with this thing. And 700 bucks for something like this, uh, you just can't beat it. Now, what I would recommend after watching lots and lots of videos and experimenting with this for about six months, I did go out and buy this lens here. This is a 10 by 18 wide angle. Not all wide angles are the same. What you have to be careful with some of your wide angles, especially, especially if you're doing stuff like this to where you want to be able to do a selfie or Joan and I are walking and you know I throw my arm out like this as she and I are standing there talking with it. What you have to be careful with some of your wide angles um, you'll actually get something called fish eye, and it just kind of distorts around the edges. This is an inexpensive lens. I think this one was around the $250 mark. And I know, uh, oh, Jerry, you know, you're getting close to $1,000 uh, in your camera gear. Well, again, I have stepped up over time based on you know, the, the few dollars that we make off the YouTube channel and those types of things, I make an investment in camera gear to try to make a better video for you to be able to watch. And um, this lens was very, very important to that. I use this in all of our, all of our museum uh, videos. It's, um, it's what they call, a, it's a very bright lens. 
um, and it gives that wide shot. So instead of just trying to narrowly focus into something, I can get that wide shot, you know, in the museum and show all the different uh, elements that are in there. It's a fantastic camera. Again, in this run and gun mode, um, you know, I don't use one of those very large $500, $600 gimbals. Now I'm up into this thing and I know it would take the motion out of the camera. If you've, you've seen, uh, you know, videographers and some of the vloggers out there do that. But that changes the whole profile of the style that now I'm going into a museum with this big rack of gear and I'm going to start running into issues that um, either, you know, people are going to avoid me or try to get into a shot or, you know, the types of things that go on. Fantastic camera. I will suggest this. The built-in microphones in these are reasonable. Uh, I've used it uh, uh, probably half the shots. If I go indoors, I'm going to be using the, uh, the indoor microphone that's in this camera. It does a daggum good job, and I'm really pleased with it. Outside, it's terrible. Um, the way the camera body is made, just the slightest amount of wind going across it, um, you hear it. You hear that scratchy, windy sound. And if it's very, very windy, you can't even hear my voice over it. It's just absolutely awful. And this is a Rhodes uh, go-to mic. Um, they re the industry refers to these, okay, I'm a kitty lover. They refer to these as dead cats. It just, you know, it slips on. There's the actual microphone and you slip this thing on it. And when the wind blows, it's not 100%, but it'll take, I don't know, you know, if you have a good brisk wind, it'll probably take 80 to 90% out of it. It muffles most of it, kind of runs across the artificial fur of this thing. And um, this guy just, you know, slips on like this, really, really simple. Uh, and you, you've got a jack here that it plugs into the side and, um, it just absolutely does fantastic audio. Now, these run in a wide variety of ranges, um, whether you're using it you know, in a forward mode uh, for selfies or you're using it for something like this. You know, as I'm walking around narrating, uh, I will have this out like so and I'll do my narration. It does great, great video and great, great audio. These things are running about 120 bucks. I'm giving you Amazon prices on these, about $120. Um, and they go up from there. This uh, Go Mic by Rhodes uh, has no batteries in it. Um, and I like that a lot. Uh, I like a very simplistic style of shooting. Less batteries is good <laughs> for Jerry because I never have enough in my pocket. And uh, the last thing I want to worry about is this guy dying on me when I'm, you know, 50 miles away from the RV and uh, I've, you know, and I'm in a noisy environment and I really need this mic. I, I really do love this thing. It's really, really a great mic. So this is my Canon setup. If, if I was just going to, you know, look at something like this, you're looking at roughly around a thousand dollars investment. So. We had phone, we've got camcorder, now we've got a Canon. Now I would like to show you if, if photography is not very, very important for you, I will show you the second thing that I use the most in my bag. 50% of the time, I'm shooting with this. The other 50% of the time, you've got it. GoPro. This is my second GoPro. I started off with a 5. I hated my 5. Um, I just, I just didn't like it. I just didn't like the not having a back screen on it, even though it doesn't stay on all the time. At least with this, it stays on and you can kind of adjust this. It stays on for about two minutes and you can kind of adjust your frame. I just love this camera. Um, and again, we use it about 50% of the time. If you're watching us hike, uh, and with a lot of a lot of movement and a lot of shaking, you're going to be seeing video off of a GoPro 8, and uh, the video is phenomenal. I, I just can't say enough about these. There's so many settings. Um, whether you want to shoot 4K, you want to shoot 1080 high def, um, whether you want to do slow motion, time lapse, on and on and on. You can go out there and look at the videos. There's tons of them out there, how to use a GoPro 8. That's not the purpose of today's video. This thing is just absolutely spectacular. I love it. Um, I, and I just cannot say enough good things about it. One of the things I like most about it is the ability to not place this on a gimbal. Again, 
trying to keep that low profile. That gimbal is the device that has an axis that moves up and down, left and right. But just to be able to walk with this in a steady format. I can walk and hike and this thing does a phenomenal job, just an absolutely phenomenal job of um, taking all the motion out of the video. And these things are very reasonably priced. The, these GoPro 8s now, again, they're not inexpensive, but when you're comparing, if I'm just going to use one camera and just own one camera and I really want to step up my vlogging, you can't beat this for 350 bucks. It's absolutely fantastic. It doesn't come with many features. It comes with a little basic case, not waterproof, and um, you know you can get your job done. But let me show you how I've upgraded this. There's a couple of couple uh, accessories that I bought to make the vlogging a little bit better, and just kind of go through a couple things. This is a Gurmore case. This device right here. Um, the, the back pops off like this, your, your camera goes in like so, and you've got a, this is a, an aluminum case, and um, I, this does a lot for improving your shot. One of the things I like most about it is you can place a filter on the front. This actually comes with a UV filter. Why is that important? Um, well, as I'm shooting, if I've got bright light coming down, it takes that haziness out of it. Here's the great thing about this case. Just this part of the case right here to fit into it, 30 bucks, $30. And uh, again, it's all aluminum. The next thing that I purchased was, again, we get into noisy environments with a lot of wind, especially when we're out hiking. And these GoPros will pick up that, um, that noise of that wind and it just sounds terrible and some of my videos you've heard it because either a I didn't expect it to be windy that day or again I was trying to keep a low profile um, this second little box and you don't have to have this but it's, it's a good thing to have this second little box holds the adapter for an external microphone now let me show you this thing right here this is a GoPro device it's the microphone adapter um, it's the most ridiculously, ridiculously expensive adapter that I can ever think about. And these things are 50 bucks. You got it. Just for this little doodad right here. It's just absolutely ridiculous. But it's essential if you want to run an, ex an external microphone. Um, I bought this before it was always dangling and hanging around you. You open up a little door here and this has got a USB-C that snaps in like so. And then that slides in there like that. Isn't that awesome? 50, 50 bucks for this thing. And this little item that sits here down here on the bottom, this little housing, aluminum, yep, 15 bucks. <laughs> so you've got this. Okay, here is your next Rhodes mic. Uh, this is what they call the micro. And where this really works well, again, is in that environment where it's very noisy. Um, and there's a lot of wind. You'll notice I have a little bit of an extension on here that if I'm doing selfies, uh, if this gets down too close because of the wide angle lens, you'll get a little bit of the fur in the shot. These are like five, six, seven, eight dollars and you can buy them anywhere. They're all over the place. But you can place this on here like so. And then this guy here plugs in here at the bottom and you're off and going. My profile just changed. Uh, I become a little bit more um, evident <laughs> that I am walking around and I am videoing. But if I'm out hiking or doing something like that, I'm going to carry this guy around. Yeah, he's going to bounce around a little bit. It's no big deal. It doesn't hurt anything. But the audio quality is just absolutely fantastic. But what I like the most about this setup is when um, we are just walking around and I'm not going to carry the big camera today and I just want the little selfie stick that I'm going to use here. I won't even carry this thing with me, you know, if I'm not going to use any of that. I'll just keep it in this case and uh, I shoot a lot of video of just this setup right here. It's so small, it's so lightweight, I can slip it into my, you know, hiking pants. It's very, very small. The little added lens, I'll mention this as well. Um, this lens will protect your camera as well. I think they're like $8 for this little thing. They screw on and screw off. 
And uh, I dropped this uh, at a campground in Mississippi, and I mean, it went down hard. The lens busted into a bazillion pieces. You know what? It protected my GoPro, and I didn't have anything happen to it. Um, these are little cheap selfie sticks, you know, you can buy, you know, so you can stick it out like that, or you need to lift this up over some kind of a height. You know, you can lift it up and show the height. You know, I'm not going to, you know, these things are dime a dozen, and you can find them everywhere. I like the ones that you can twist and collapse. And I don't need one that's 10 feet long. Great camera, total investment for something like this. You know, you're in the, you know, four and a quarter to 450 by the time. You know, if you're going to buy your your um, your microphones and those types of things. What I would stress is if you're going to video a lot, you're going to need some extra batteries. These things come with a battery, uh, and come with two, depending on the kit that you buy. And then you can buy one of these little external chargers that you can put two batteries in. And uh, I go through batteries like crazy. Uh, one of the things that you'll find once you start vlogging is that you'll throw roughly about half your video away uh, because you'll go into the museum, you'll film something four or five different times, and then once you get back to the video editor and start looking at it, you'll go, I really only need this one piece or I only need half of this and you know I carried on for an hour. You just don't need all the video and you will go through a lot of batteries. Um, and uh, so what I do is I throw one in the camera, I keep these charged up, I drop a couple in my pocket, they're thin, and I can shoot all day with three batteries. I can get a lot, a lot of video in. So this is a Hero 8. Golly, what a fantastic camera. I just absolutely love it. We're seeing where we're going with this. Let me show you my newest edition. Um, for Christmas, uh, I bought um, a new camera, and I am so excited about this. Um, I, I don't know exactly where I'm going to use all this, but I did. If you saw the latest video that I did at Robbins Air Force Base, this was shot 100% uh, with a uh, DGI Osmo. This thing is amazing. Um, I just love this little thing. Um, I'm not sure where I'm, go I'm going to use it at, uh, but I know one thing, I am going to use it. It's, um, it's a great little addition. If you'll notice this oscillating head, this multi-axis head, uh, as you walk with it, it, it actually moves and keeps your video steady, and it does a great job. It was absolutely spectacular in the museum. I used it indoors. I used it outdoors. I just couldn't be happier with it. It was absolutely fantastic. And there's all kinds of features um, that can be used. One of the things, watch this, you tap this thing three times on the back and it goes into selfie mode. So as I'm walking and I want to put my face on the video for a few seconds and maybe explain something, uh, I hit that three times and I talk for a few minutes and then I hit it three times again and the head turns back around and I'm facing forward again. It's got a very, very nice camera capability built into it. This thing is absolutely spectacular. Uh, what I did notice in the day of shooting is I went through a lot of battery. You have no external batteries on something like this. Um, it's all self-contained. Uh, you plug in down at the bottom and uh, when that battery is dead, that's the end of the shoot. But there's ways to be able to work around that at a very reasonable price. Just to kind of let you know, uh, purchasing this, you know, it came with, um, it was a kit that I bought off Amazon. It came with this, you know, very handy carrying case. And this is what I love so much and why we'll probably be using this a lot. Um, you slip that into a pair of blue jeans and uh, anytime that I want to be able to shoot something, I pull it out I hold this thing for three seconds and I am shooting. It's got a forward and backward camera that's built into it. You kind of hold it in a cup. Uh, I'm right-handed or left-handed, but you kind of hold it in a cup. There's a mic down here at the bottom that's used for noise canceling. There's a mic that's on the front and I kind of shoot it, uh, kind of hold it and shoot like this or, you know, I'm going to shoot kind of like that as I'm walking around. And you talk about low profile for running gun. Oh, isn't this thing awesome? Um, and then, you know, you just uh, hold this thing for just a few seconds and uh, it's back in the pocket again and we're off doing uh, what we need to be doing. Now, I will share this with you. It is not waterproof. 
So uh, do be careful where you go with it. You don't want to get this thing wet. But it's absolutely awesome. Um, $309, I think I paid for this. It came with a camera, uh, the carrying case, this carrying case, uh, and it came with 128 uh, gig uh, micro card to go with it as well. A very high quality card, I might say. And um, the video is absolutely spectacular. You can do 4K on it. You can do 1080i. Uh, I shoot most of my stuff in 1080. It's just absolutely fantastic. I love this camera. It's just absolutely great. Uh, one other thing from a video perspective that I think you'll find uh, that can be very, very useful. This, no, it's it's, it's, it's not a, a GoPro. Uh, this is a cross tour, a cross tour. It's some Chinese cheap knockoff thing that is supposed to be like a GoPro, but it's not a GoPro. Why would I even have something like this in my kit? 30 bucks. Oh, where I use something like this is if I think I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> Um, I did a video here a while back of uh, our Hensley hitch, that big giant $2,700 Hensley hitch that we have, that air hitch uh, on the back that uh, takes all the bumps and the shakes and rattles out of, our, out of our fifth wheel when we drive down the road. And I mounted this using, you know, something like this that actually suctioned to the back of, back of the window of the truck and pointed that down and we drove down the road for about a half hour to an hour with the truck, you know, hitting bumps and all those types of things. And I was showing how smooth of a ride and how that hitch actually worked. Uh, I would not have wanted to lose this, but 30 bucks is a lot less of an investment over 350 bucks, right? And uh, the video is really, really good. You do not have the stabilization with something like this, but it, it has its purpose. Uh, the nice thing about it, um, for 30 bucks, uh, it came with a waterproof case and uh, it came with uh, a, an extra little battery. Now, you're only gonna get about half an hour to 45 minutes out of one of these batteries. That's not much shooting. And it came with two of them. No external charger. You have to charge them inside of the uh, of the camera. But uh, when you're looking for, you know, some type of an action shot, um, you know, again, we have something like this. And, uh, you know, I can stick it on a, you know, take this and stick it on a windshield and do those action shots. It's absolutely fantastic for something like that. Um, it's, it's a great little investment for $30. It's a great little investment. And again, if you're wanting to add variety to your YouTube channel, this now gives you something that um, you can do that with, or I would rather take this and jump in the pool <laughs> than this in a waterproof case. I know a lot of people do it, but I'd rather do this at 30 bucks and hoping that it doesn't leak versus a waterproof case with my $350 Hero 8. So um, these are great. These are, these are great for something like that. This was a lot of information to take in. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. I hope you found it useful. Look, we are going to be traveling places that we may never get to go to again. We may see things that might have been just that one event that will never happen again. And you want to make sure you've got the right equipment and the quality equipment to be able to capture that photo or capture that video. I've tried to do things uh, showing what you can do on a budget. Yeah, you can spend thousands of dollars, but for a couple hundred bucks or just using the phone that you already have in your hand, that can be all that you need. But if you really want to step up your game, um, look, for a couple hundred bucks, you can get a nice camera DSLR that will give you great pictures, great video. If you're wanting to do a lot of action, you can get you a nice um, a hero or you can you know go out and buy this DJI Osmo they both have their different place and I'm looking forward to uh, continuing the videos out of there look again I will break this down into categories and put the description and link so you can see where this can be purchased if you're wanting to go the 
GoPro route, I'll have a block of that. If you're wanting to go the Osmo route, I'll show you a block of prices for that. Or if you're wanting to go the handheld right route, use a DSLR. I'll show you that as well. And you can see the links to where you can buy this on the description of this YouTube video. I'll do the same thing on the ilovervlife.com blog and in our newsletter. I hope you enjoyed. Hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. And uh, as always, if you ever have any questions about how we make our videos or the type of equipment that we use or the places that we see and go to, feel free to go to ilovervlife.com, click on the contact area of the menu and you'll see a place to where you can send us an email. We respond to 100% of our emails as always and we'll always do our best to try to continue to do that. We'll be glad to answer your questions. We love RV travel. We love doing the video piece. Yeah, you got it. We just love RV life.